technology is always dual purpose. AI is really no different. Threat actors are starting to use this new technology to do things like automating cyber attacks. AI really lowers the bar a step further. The cybersecurity industry moves very quickly. You have an AI management system. You need governance, you need assurance, you gotta test your systems, and then you need controls to make sure that you know those risks aren't realized. Today we're diving into AI and cybersecurity and how companies can embrace new technology without really losing control or compliance. Corporations are gonna to need to figure out where are my red lines and how am I gonna create policies and structures within my business so that the teams that are implementing and enabling AI are following what's good for my business. Hi everyone, this is Maheen and welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast where we explore the insights helping businesses thrive in the digital age. And today we're diving into AI and cybersecurity and how companies can embrace new technology without really losing control or compliance. Our guest is Andrew Buckles, the Executive VP of Services at ISA Cybersecurity, a Canadian cyber and AI services provider. Andrew leads uh, their AI team and oversees the Cyber360 and AI360 offerings. And in this particular ap episode, we'll ex uh, discuss the security implications of AI, how to adopt it safely and compliantly, the productivity gains AI agents can unlock, and what responsible acceleration means for Canadian organizations. So without further ado, let's welcome our guest, Andrew. Andrew, we're very pleased to have you on the show today. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much for having me. Very pleased to have you with us. Now, Andrew, you've noted that the convergence of AI and cybersecurity is bringing unprecedented challenges and opportunities to the forefront. Uh, let's begin our conversation by highlighting the cybersecurity risks of AI advancements. Tell us, given the convergence of AI and cybersecurity, what emerging risks should Canadians, Canadian leaders anticipate as they accelerate AI adoption? Yeah, the really interesting thing about technology, and this goes all the way back to, you know, the invention of fire, is that technology is always dual purpose. So it can be used for good, it can be used for bad. You know, with the fire, you can, uh, you know, cook food and heat your home, or you can burn the neighboring village. Uh, and so AI is really no different. Uh, I think, you know, this is a paradigm shifting technology. You know, it's obviously a very big change. Uh, the markets are certainly picking up on that, obviously. Uh, and threat actors are starting to use this new technology, uh, you know, to their benefit to do things like automating cyber attacks, uh, identifying vulnerabilities in an environment. Uh, one of the major uh, leading AI firms, Anthropic, uh, released uh, some research uh, recently that talked about a threat campaign that was undertaken by uh, a threat actor funded by the CCP, nation state. Uh, back in September, where they were using their Claude AI product to effectively almost automate the uh, cyber attack against, uh, you know, North American ad, uh, targets. So there were about 30 North American international organizations that they targeted with this campaign. Uh, and this lowers the bar to entry. You know, we've been talking for years in our industry about how ransomware as a service and you don't need to be a technical expert to be a cyber adversary or cyber attacker because of things like ransomware as a service that are available on these markets on the dark web. Uh, AI really lowers the bar a step further so that these adversaries, you know, don't have to be as technically sophisticated as they had in the past. And they're really taking advantage of this new capability uh, much quicker than the defenders are. Mm -hmm. uh, so certainly organizations are going to need to catch up and start to learn how to embed these AI systems uh, into their defenses, uh, because certainly the rapid response that is needed on these very rapid attacks uh, is going to be much more important than it has been in the past. Absolutely. You know, that's a crucial strategic question as well. And it 
highlights, I mean, your response highlights that anticipating risk is the first step to really building a robust AI defense program. Now, Andrew, let's explore the strategic frameworks uh, needed to govern AI adoption safely and ethically. Um, adopting AI is easy, but doing so securely and ethically is the hard part. And ISA's AI 360 services, they span the entire life cycle from strategy to governance. Uh, tell us what frameworks or standards are most valuable today for ensuring responsible, secure, and compliant AI implementation? Yeah, so it's the same players that uh, come up with frameworks in the cybersecurity industry. And a lot of the best practices in a cybersecurity program uh, certainly apply into an AI program as well. Uh, you know, this technology is paradigm shifting, but at the end of the day, if you want to effectively manage your risk, then it's all about risk assessments, risk decisions, mitigation plans, implementing new controls, you know, the cybersecurity industry moves very quickly. So, you know, as an example, you know, many organizations wouldn't have had MFA deployed, you know, multi-factor authentication, you know, a second token deployed across their environment, you know, a decade ago. Uh, and it's become a standard. And it's become a standard because, you know, if your password is stolen, then someone can break into your account and that extra layer of control, you know, helps you manage that risk of that password being stolen. So in AI, it's the same approach. So you, you look at you know, NIST AI risk management framework, you look at ISO 42001, you know, from a top down perspective, they're very comparable to the NIST cybersecurity framework and ISO 27001. So there's this concept in cybersecurity called an information security management system. You know, if I put it very simply, the information security management system is making sure that assignment of accountability is uh, assigned in the organization. Uh, that risks are being actively managed and that there is no conflict of interests in the accountabilities, right? You're, you know, you wouldn't necessarily want the person that's in charge of, uh, you know, enabling and streamlining technology in the business to go and capture new revenues to also be in charge to making sure that that technology is deployed in a risk managed way. Mm -hmm. That's why you have a CISO, uh, you know, and segregating those duties. So now in AI, you have an AI management system which is really the same thing. How do you make sure that you implement structures from a governance, uh, risk assessment and management perspective uh, so that you are actively assessing and managing those AI risks and then implementing the controls that are required to make sure that you're not realizing unnecessary risks. So conceptually, it's really very, very similar. Um, you know, you need governance, you need assurance, you got to test your systems that you've deployed it, and then you need controls to make sure that, you know, those risks aren't realized. That is such a vital strategic focus. Um... Andrew, and it's clear that governance and ethical frameworks, they are the non-negotiable foundations for the safe AI adoption. Um, um, now let's discuss the power of AI augmentation and the revolutionary productivity gains that it delivers. AI, uh, um, Andrew, AI agents, they ha can handle highly repetitive time intensive tasks really freeing up human staff for higher value work and isa has a success story that proves this now recently I, uh, isa's uh, ai 360 services achieved a 90 percent productivity gain in a complex rfx uh, responses uh tell us uh what does this success story reveal about the power of secure collaborative ai agents yeah this is a great example so i think you touched on it earlier uh, you know, there's a lot of risks that come with an incorrect AI implementation. You know, doing AI is fairly easy, but doing it securely and safely and in a risk managed way, uh, not so much. Um, so, you know, I think most organizations, including ourselves, you know, in the early days, it really starts with ex experimentation. You know, this is a new field. Not a lot of the controls are established, you know, and when you're doing that ex experimentation, I think what's really important is you look at your use cases within your business on where AI can be applied. And you really look at uh, you know, low risk, high impact use cases. So, you know, in our world, we respond to a lot of RFPs, R RFIs, you know, RFXs, we'll call it, you know, all these different types of, you know, request for, um, and they're very time intensive. And a lot of the questions that are asked, you know, from different organizations, they're similar, but there might be nuances between them. Um, and so what we did was we developed uh, an architecture where, you know, our team, our sales team would be able to leverage AI agents that are specifically trained and designed to manage the workflows that we use for our RFPs. Um, and I'll give you an example, because it's not as simple as, uh, you know, we've got Claude or we've got Gemini or we've got ChatGPT and let's just, you know, give it a file and let's just interact with it. I'll give you a very basic example. So a question that we might get very often is what frameworks do you leverage? There's lots of different types of frameworks available depending on what you're doing. So we do a lot of penetration testing services. 
the frameworks that we use in our penetration testing services are different than the frameworks we would use in our risk assessment services. Uh, and so the agent needs to understand those nuances. And if you just use an assistant like a ChatGPT and you ask it those kinds of questions, even with a robust data set, you may get the wrong answer. And so our implementation was actually a series of agents that were designed specifically to what kind of question am I being asked? What domain does this sit in? Do I have enough information to be able to give a robust answer? If it doesn't, it knows who the subject matter expert is, and it'll actually open a ticket in our ITSM, assigning it to the right person to make sure that they get the right answer. Um, so what we've been able to realize with this implementation is about a 90% productivity increase uh, in a task that nobody really likes doing. So, you know, it was a great, easy use case. We can get a big win for the team. They don't like working on RFPs. It's kind of this necessary evil within the business. Even our customers don't like issuing RFPs. Most of them, it's, you know, very, very time consuming, um, but necessary. So, uh, you know, giving them this tool that we custom built specifically for our workflows that gives us high quality answers very, very quickly and reduces the amount of time that it takes by about 90%, very, very impactful. And it also gets more buy-in, you know, culturally. So you start with those low risk use cases, you start to get user buy-in and adoption, then you start to add other use cases and people start to understand how can AI be effectively implemented in the business? That is such a powerful metric, um, Andrew. And it proves that AI augmentation delivers massive measurable ROI by really saving st the staff the time on data retrieval and manual documentation. This is if you are looking to achieve massive efficiency gains with AI, then please learn from uh, this conversation that we had with Andrew about the AI 360 framework, the secrets to secure and compliant AI adoption, and how to safely accelerate your business on the global stage. Now let's continue our conversation with Andrew. We'll take a quick break. Please don't go anywhere because when we're back, we'll unpack how AI agents are transforming productivity and reshaping the way teams work. Hey, you think you know UPS? Yeah, that's us. Everybody knows that. You know what you didn't know? This. Okay, try to keep up. Ocean. Us. Ground, rail, air, so us. Guess who? Us. Customs cleared, borders cleared, done. Us. Us. Still with me? Wait for it. Boom. Us. Intelligent, automated, fulfillment. Us. Yep. Healthcare too. Digital your thing? Yeah, well, book it, ship it, track it. You feeling me yet? Yep, that's all us. That's all UPS. Welcome back, everyone. Let's jump right in and explore how secure collaborative AI agents are driving real measurable efficiency gains for Canadian organizations. Now let's look at the strategic goal for Canadian enterprises, which is achieving the responsible acceleration. Um, Andrew, Canadian organizations, they compete on a global stage requiring both speed and strong ethical practices. Uh, what does responsible acceleration look like in practice for Canadian entre enterprises and how must corporate governance evolve to safely incorporate these new AI systems into their cyber program? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. And, you know, I'm going to start with kind of the AI companies themselves. Uh, you know, certainly I think these models do not have uh, in the industry, they call it alignment. You know, human beings understand, uh, you know, what is ethically and morally right, what is ethically and morally wrong. These AI systems don't know that and they have to be instilled into the models. There's different kinds of techniques that AI companies would use to be able to do that. Um, you know, those, those techniques uh, certainly are not perfect. And, you know, this is a big problem in the AI industry where they need to solve, they call it the alignment problem or the super alignment problem. Uh, you know, how do you get these systems to think about the impacts of their decisions when they're trying to achieve their goals to make sure that you mitigate any risks that mm -hmm. potentially could occur? The AI companies are mostly focused on CBRN risks, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear uh, type risks. Um, but certainly, I think from that perspective, uh, you know, there's got to be more international cooperation for sure. 
uh, and there needs to be more legislation and regulation, you know, for these AI companies that are developing the models to make sure that, uh, you know, that there is alignment in, in place. And this is a very evolving uh, area. From a corporation standpoint, you know, the regulations that, you know, they work in in different industries, whether it's financial services or retail or, uh, you know, healthcare, they're evolving rapidly. You know, I know OSFI has released, you know, new guidelines. Looks like they're very mapped to the NIST uh, risk management guidelines for the financial services sector. Um, but companies also need are, are going to need to figure out, you know, what what use cases and what are their ethical guidelines during implementations. So I, I like to give retail examples because I think it's, uh, you know, a very human experience to go to a store. You know, is it OK for a retailer to, um, you know, profile people that walk into the store and understand, you know, maybe this is the CEO walking in of a company? And they have a higher income and we're going to raise the prices before they get to the aisles. Is that okay? Are there laws that are preventing that? Are there regulations that are preventing that? You know, could it be a negative business impact reputationally if a retailer was to implement a use case like that? You know, taking it a step further, you know, is it okay if you're a pharmacy uh, to profile people that walk into the store? Maybe you check their temperature, you know, through devices that can uh, read the temperature of a person. Well, any fever reducing medications, we're going to raise all the prices before they get to that. You know, those types of applications are now possible uh, or much easier than they were in the past, uh, you know, with AI. And so corporations are going to need to figure out where are my red lines and how am I going to create policies and structures within my business so that the teams that are implementing and enabling AI in their departments, you know, are following, you know, what's what's good for my business and not implementing things that might be bad for my business. That is a crucial strategic direction, Andrew, and it confirms that governance uh, must adapt faster than technology to ensure safe and competitive AI adoption. Um, this has been a great, great informative conversation with you, uh, Andrew. Thank you so much for shedding light on so much on compliance and AI adoption side of things. Um, now that we're wrapping up things, if there is one core message that you want listeners to remember about confidently navigating their AI and technology future, what would it be? I would say start experimenting if you haven't, uh, you know, certainly figure out a use case that is that low risk, high impact. Uh, you know, don't begin your AI journey with a customer chatbot. I think, you know, many people have probably seen in the news, you know, the car dealer that sold a car for one dollar. Now, they weren't legally obligated to, you know, sell the car to that person. But obviously, that has major reputational impacts uh, for, for the business. So I think that needs to be taken into consideration. Um you know, doing AI safely and securely is hard. Uh, so making sure that, you know, those initial use cases are not leveraging highly sensitive data, highly sensitive workflows, publicly facing workflows, that would be very, very risky. Um, and start investing in a team, you know, start in, you know, who's going to be the person that's in charge of AI risk in your organization, you know, similar to chief information security officer, who's going to be the chief AI officer in the organization. If you're a smaller company, you know, chances are that that person's going to be wearing many hats. Right. It could be the person that's in charge of cybersecurity today. There is a lot of overlap in terms of concepts of what's important in the AI field as it is in the cybersecurity field. So I do think there is, uh, you know, a directly applicable skill set. Um, so I would say experiment, start figuring out how you can embed models. Assistant versus agent, you know, assistant is kind of the easy button. But, you know, start experimenting on the agentic side. You know, how can you deploy these systems, you know, in an automated way where you know, workflows are kicked off via an email or maybe it's a ticket, uh, you know, in your ticketing system, things like that. Uh, and you'll start to figure out how you can safely adopt it into your business over time. That is a powerful and actionable message, Andrew. Thank you so much for being on the show with us and for sharing such great expertise and your vision. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. And that was a great conversation with Andrew from ISA Cybersecurity on secure AI adoption, the risks for moving too fast without safeguards and how businesses can future-proof themselves in an AI-driven world. Thanks again for listening to the podcast. Uh, please subscribe for more insights and visit canadianisme.ca for tools and resources that can support your success. A big thank you and a shout out to our partners, UPS, Avon Global College, ADP, and Google for supporting small businesses across Canada. Uh, please keep moving forward and we'll see you in the next episode.